Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this very pretty spring shawl. If you love all things crochet and are passionate about the craft, then you have definitely come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future crochet videos. Now before we leap straight in to how you crochet this very pretty shawl, I just want to give you a tiny bit of information about this one on my table that I have already made. If you have no interest in this bit whatsoever, I have timestamps in the description box below, which you can use to jump to the section of the video that you want straight away and cut out any unnecessary information that you don't want or need. So this shawl on my table, it is a very quick, make it's taken me two or three days tops to make this so it is really beautiful and open with lovely drape and a very pretty little pico edge now for this shawl which i cannot get all in shot let me start from the top and work my way down so you can see all the amazing colors this was made with one patter cake yarn and a four millimeter crochet hook now to show you how much I really got out of that yarn. This is how much I had left over. So I had a serious game of yarn chicken towards the end, but I won, luckily. <laughs> and this particular pat cake that I have used is the color fruit salad. So it's perfect for springtime, great for Mother's Day, Easter. If you're just feeling a bit gloomy, then this is definitely the colorway for you. All the written information for the pattern is over on my blog, which I've linked to in the description box below. So let's move this very pretty shawl to one side and I can show you exactly how it is made. It's a three row repeat. Then I'm going to show you how you do the very pretty Pico edging. So the spring shawl, I'm going to demo using a, a six millimeter crochet hook and some red heart yarn purely so you can see what I'm doing. So we're going to start off with a magic ring and we're going to chain four. Now that chain four counts as an American term treble and a chain one. Then into the magic ring, we're going to place three double crochet stitches. Now, if at any point I am going too fast for you, you can slow the speed of the video by using the three little dots at the top right hand corner of your screen or the little cog icon down below the video itself. Chain three, three double crochet into the magic ring. chain one and we're going to end with a treble into that magic ring so a treble is yarn over twice before you go into the stitch or the magic ring in this case then you can go ahead and tighten your magic ring up for row two same as before chain four which counts as your first treble stitch and a chain one Turn your work and we're going to work into this space between that treble and your three double crochet of the row below. And into this space here, we're going to place three double crochet stitches. Chain one and into this chain three space, we're going to place three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, all into that same space here. Chain one, 
and place three double crochet. Oh, if you're lucky to have crocheted your hair in, like <laughs> three double crochet into this end space in between your double crochet stitches and that chain four at the start of that first row. So into this space here, right at the end, three double crochet. chain one and then we're going to place a treble crochet into the third chain of this chain four from the round below so you may need to scoot your stitches over a little bit if you can't see where your third chain is don't panic too much just sort of aim for the top so end with a treble into the third chain if you can. <laughs> For round three, just as before, chain four, which counts as a treble and chain one, turn your work and we're going to place three double crochet into this initial first gap here. Chain one, three double crochet into the next side space. So you're working in between your cluster of stitches for each row. Chain one. And when you've reached the sort of center spine, this corner section here of the triangle, we're going to place three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, all into that same chain three space. Chain one three double crochet into that next gap along the side. So you're working into the chain one spaces from the row below. Chain one, three double crochet into this end space here. Chain one, and end with a treble into the third chain of your original chain four. So one, two, three. But as I said, aim for the top if you can't specifically find that third chain. So we're always going to be ending with a treble into the turning chain from the row below. Okay, so your first three rows are done. Those are your setup rows. So now we are ready to begin the pattern repeat of the shawl itself. So from this point on, the next three rows we do are the pattern repeat. And those are the three rows that you'll repeat for the rest of your shawl, not these first three. Okay, row four, which is the beginning of the pattern repeat chain six now that counts as a single crochet and chain five now turn your work and we're going to be working into this very first space right at the beginning of the row pop a single crochet into that space chain five, single crochet into the next chain one space in between your clusters. And we're going to repeat this, chain five, single crochet into the chain one space, chain five, 
And once you get to this top corner point here, sort of the central spine of your shawl, I'm going to single crochet, chain five, single crochet, back into that same chain three space. So you're forming a loop in that sort of central spine. And we're going to work our way back down the other side now. So chain five, single crochet into the chain one space, chain five, single crochet into the next chain one space, chain five. Single crochet into this very end space of the row. And then to finish this row, chain three. And just like before, treble crochet into the third chain if you can find it. Otherwise, just aim for the top. So at the end of row four, you should have chain five spaces running all the way around your shawl. Row five, we're going to repeat the last round. So chain six to start, which counts as a single crochet and chain five. Turn your work. And into this very first space here, pop a single crochet. Chain five. And single crochet into the next chain five space. And we're going to repeat that all the way up. Chain five. single crochet into the chain space of the row below. Once you reach this sort of top loop on the spine of your shawl, just like we did on the row below, I'm going to single crochet chain five and single crochet all into that same space. So you're forming a loop atop the loop. <laughs> then work your way back down the side again. Chain five, single crochet, chain five, single crochet, chain five, single crochet, chain five, and single crochet into this final loop of the end. And once you've popped in your final single crochet of the row, to finish, chain three and pop a treble crochet into the third chain of your initial chain six. So we're always ending on a treble crochet. So at the end of row five, you will have these chain loops formed over the chain loops. Okay, for row six, which is the third and final pattern repeat row. So we've got our two rows, rows four and five of chain loops. So now for row six, chain four which counts as a treble crochet and chain one. 
turn your work and into this very first space of the row, three double crochet. Chain one, and we're going to work all the way up the side, three double crochet into these chain five spaces, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, as we work our way up the side. Once you have come up the side, and you've got your chain five loop at the top here, we're going to chain one, and into this top chain loop, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, all into that same space. chain one and we're going to work back down this edge here three double crochet chain one 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 and I'll meet you at this very end loop here So I've worked my way back down the side and into this very last loop of the row. I'm going to end with three double crochet, just as you have been doing. Chain one, and then a treble crochet into the third chain of that turning chain. So these three rows, ignore this center section, these rows, rows four, five, and six, are the pattern repeat rows. So you would just repeat rows four, five, six, over and over and over again until your shawl is the desired size that you want. So to start the next row, it would be as if you were doing row four again. Chain six, single crochet, chain five, single crochet, chain five, single crochet, working into these spaces every time. You're always working into the spaces, apart from at the very end when you were working into the third chain. So I'm going to do another repeat. So I'm going to go ahead and crochet rows four, five, and six all over again. And then I will come back and show you how you do the very pretty Pico edging. So I'm just finishing up my last repeat of row six. I've got rid of the pink background because obviously this yarn has changed to pink now. It's quite fluorescent and I didn't want to hurt your eyes <laughs> with too much pink on pink. So I've switched out that pink background. So when you are ready to add your border, you want to end on a repeat of row six, which is a granny cluster row because we're going to be working our pico edging into the top of these stitches. 
So we're going to chain one which does not count as a stitch and turn your work. You're going to place a single crochet into the top of that treble from the row below. And we're going to completely skip over these chain one spaces. We're only going to be working into the tops of these three double crochet of your granny clusters as you go along. So do not work into the spaces. So we're going to place a single crochet into that very first double crochet of your group of three. And then into the second double crochet, we're going to place a single crochet and a chain three pico. Now you can do your chain three picots however you prefer, but they all start with chain three, <laughs> clue is in the name. Now to get a nice flat pico, I don't slip stitch back into this chain, I slip stitch into this single crochet itself. Now I'm going to be placing my hook underneath the front loop of this single crochet here and this front bar here. So I'm just going to place my hook underneath that front loop and this very front bar and pop a slip stitch in, which gives you quite a nice flat pico. And then to end, place a single crochet into the top of that second double crochet. So into that middle stitch, you will have a single crochet, chain three pico, and a single crochet. Then single crochet into the third of those three double crochet stitches. So you're going to do this all the way up to the center point. I'll show you one more time. Skip that chain one, single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet, chain three pico and single crochet into the next. So that's second double crochet. And then single crochet into the last, to that third double crochet. So you have four stitches worked over the three double crochet clusters below. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so keep doing that all the way up the side. Single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet, chain three pico, single crochet in the second, single crochet in the third. Skipping over those chain one spaces. We'll whiz all the way along and I'll meet you here in just a second. So that's my final cluster up this first side. And into your chain three space, so your center spine of your shawl, single crochet, single crochet, chain three pico. and two more single crochet into that space. Then we're going to repeat this all the way down the other side. So just as before, single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet, chain three pico, and a single crochet all into that second stitch. single crochet in the third. So keep going down this side. Now I'll meet you here and show you how to tackle this bottom raw edge. So that was my last full cluster of the row. 
So then we're going to place, skip one chain and place a single crochet into the third chain, right on the end there. Then we're going to do a chain three pico and place another single crochet into the top of that chain three. So same place where you just put your first single crochet, we're going to pop another one in there. Now spin it around so you're looking at your bottom edge. And we do this slightly differently, but only slightly. So you're going to be working your stitches into these end gaps. So we're going to be working around these stitches all the way to this center point. So into these gaps, we're going to have one single crochet, another single crochet with a chain three pico. and one single crochet. So you've got three single crochet in total with that chain three pico coming from the second single crochet. And then straight away into this next, working around the treble of the row below, we've got a single crochet, single crochet with the chain three pico, single crochet. So three stitches instead of four for this bottom raw edge. Keep doing that all the way and I'll meet you right down here by your magic circle to show you how to span this gap here. So that is my final set of stitches before I hit my magic circle. So hopefully you also have something that looks like this. So three stitches into each of those side gaps. Now to span this little tiny section here, chain one, then chain three, slip stitch into that second chains. So you've got four chains in total, slip stitch, count back one, two, three, if that's easier, or count up one, two, and just slip stitch into that chain. So we're forming a little pico. Chain one, and then straight away into this next gap, single crochet. So you've got this little sort of pico that hovers over this section and you can continue with your single crochet single crochet chain three pico single crochet so your three stitches just how you've been doing here with that chain three pico if i just finish up this little one you can see how it's lying so this little chain three Pico that you've just done lies over that gap. On my main shawl, let me see if I can grab it. You can see that it perfectly hovers over that little section. Surprise, cat hair. So on mine, you can see that hovers quite neatly over that midpoint there. So continue working up the side exactly as you have been along here into every space along. So this is the very last treble and I'm right back to where I started. I'm just finishing up there. 
And now to finish the row, you have one single crochet that you started right in the very beginning. So into the top of this stitch, that treble, single crochet, chain three picot, and then slip stitch to that very first single crochet, which brings that pico round the corner. And that's it, your shawl is complete. So hopefully, rather than a small doll size shawl like I have here, you have a big, full-sized, glorious shawl that you can wear. So I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Please do let me know in the comments if you have any questions. The written pattern and all the information can be found on my blog or in the description box down there. So don't forget to click show more to expand that box where you'll find all the information you could possibly need. If you haven't already subscribed, it would be amazing if you just took a moment to do that. It really helps my channel. Or perhaps share this video with someone else who you think may also enjoy making this very simple yet effective spring shawl. So until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.